Hi guys, I'm Brooke and this is Pippa and we travel full time in my Honda CRV. If you don't know us already, we have been on the road since August of 2020, but full time in the Honda now for over a year. Officially, we have celebrated our one year anniversary on the road in my Honda Sheila. Wow, I need to make a different video about that. But today, we are actually going to talk about something kind of interesting and this video is going to be a little bit more like me talking but a lot more inserts of like vlog style footage because I'm going to walk you through exactly how I choose my boondocking sites. I got a comment on one of those videos that said we want to see exactly how you choose your spots, what you look for, um, all of the above. So I did a little experiment and as I was planning out that video, the tunnel fire happened in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is actually where I was staying when I had filmed those boondocking videos. I got forced out of my campsite and I had to really quickly decide where I was going to go next. and this is going to be where I decided to go next. So obviously my process is so fast now. At the beginning, it took me a really long time to kind of decide where I wanted to go, but now my process is much quicker. I do this a couple times a month. I usually go to Durango, Colorado. When I'm in Flagstaff, I usually pop over to Durango. It's about a four and a half hour drive. It's really easy, like off the you know main highways. It's a really pretty drive through Navajo Nation. I love that drive so much. But the thing about it is, is that this fire that happened in Flagstaff happened really early in the season. If you don't know, usually fire season is much later and Durango, Colorado is at a lot higher elevation and is still really cold at night. So I knew I couldn't go to the campsite that I really love outside of Durango. So I had to do something new. So I pulled up immediately the maps app and I just looked up places near Durango, right? And I also looked up if there were any Planet Fitnesses around, you know, groceries, Walmarts, all that stuff. So I settled in on Farmington, New Mexico, because there is a Planet Fitness there. I knew I could do laundry. I knew I could shower there. I knew I could do all these things. So after I pulled up Farmington, I immediately pulled up my weather app. I wanted to see what the weather was going to be like when I was coming in, was it going to be windy? Was it going to be hot? How, what were the nighttime temperatures, etc.? cetera. Um, and I also checked the elevation of Farmington. Farmington's elevation was actually pretty similar to Flagstaff. It was just a little bit lower in elevation to like 6,500 to 7,000 feet in Flagstaff. This area was sitting right around 5,700 feet. So it was a little bit lower in elevation. So I knew I'd have some warmer nights, which is what I was looking for. And it was more of a desert climate versus a forest kind of climate in Flagstaff. And so I knew in the back of my mind that I needed to be careful on daytime temperatures and rattlesnakes because when the daytime temperatures warm up, the snakes come out with the dog. I was a little concerned about that. The daytime temperatures the entire time I was there were between like 60s and 70s, which is perfect. And the nighttime temperatures ranged in like the 30s to 40s, which is still kind of cold, but it works for me. Um, I'm used to staying in those kinds of temperatures. And they were the ones that I was staying in in Flagstaff as well. So it wasn't going to be much of a change. And beggars really can't be choosers when you are trying to avoid a forest fire. So I knew I just had to make a decision pretty quickly and get on the road. After I looked up kind of all of the logistics, the elevation, the weather, Planet Fitnesses, towns, all of that stuff, I opened up my trusty Campendium app and I pulled up the map around Farmington and I selected free camping um, out of the selection box. And I just started to look through my options. So my options were pretty much the Dunes, OHV um, area, a Walmart, a casino, and a Brown Springs campground. So as I started to just click through those, I was looking through reviews. I was looking through the star rating. I didn't know how long the weather was going to be out. So um, casinos and Walmarts are usually out for me because I like to stay somewhere a little bit longer. And the Dunes OHV um, 
reviews were pretty bad and so I settled on Brown Springs because all of the reviews seemed really nice. You needed a permit to stay there which made me a little bit more comfortable because you were going to have less random people because you needed a permit to stay there and it seemed like a lot of people really enjoyed staying at that area and so I decided to go for it. <laughs> After I kind of decided that Brown Springs was going to be the goal, I started to scour and look through all the reviews. I sat there for about 10 minutes and just read every single review because you can get so much crucial information from the reviews on either Campendium or iOverlander that I encourage you to read them. Um, these are fellow travelers trying to help their fellow traveler community. So I learned so much through the reviews. First, that you needed a permit. Some people got them, some people didn't, but you technically needed one via the review. So I put that on my list. They also, few reviewers gave out the address for the Bureau of Land Management office, which was perfect because then I didn't even need to look it up myself, which thank you reviewer. Also saw that there were two ways that people were tending to get into the campground. One seems to be bad and one seems to be good. So there wasn't a lot of clarification on which one was good or which one was bad, but I just kind of made a mental note that when I was in the Bureau of Land Management office, I would ask them which one was the easier route to use. Another review that really stuck out to me about information is that it wasn't very busy because it seemed like it was like such a great spot that I was like, why isn't it very busy? But I just think that because you need a permit, I think that really scared off, you know, a lot of people that would be like partying or doing other things. When I looked up the cell phone coverage, it looked like there was decent coverage. Nobody like complained about it or anything like that really in the reviews that concerned me that I wouldn't be able to upload videos or stream or like see anything that I needed to do. And a lot of people noted that it was pretty clean there. So I figured let's go for it. So first I drove into Farmington. I gave myself plenty of time. I stopped in town to do like groceries and stuff since I had to get out of Flagstaff pretty quickly. I needed to grab a few things. Um, so I kind of got to like see the area and everything like that. And then I first popped straight over to the Bureau of Land Management offices because somebody else said in one of the reviews that they like take, they kind of like close for lunch and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure I got there before noon, before they took their lunch. And I filled out my permit form. There was no issues with it. I sh I'm showing the blank form because obviously I I don't want everyone to know all of my information on there, but I initially just filled out a permit for a week because I obviously hadn't stayed there yet. I didn't know um, if I was going to stay a really long time or not. I ended up staying the full two weeks. I had to go back and get a second permit, um, but I, I really loved this campsite. And so that's why I'm kind of glad that this is like a really good example of what you can find that's still free and while i was at the office did ask the woman uh which route i should take in to the campground and she gave me route to go in through the glade reservoir area first instead of going like kind of like the back way um and so that was one of the ones that was listed on campendium it all matched up so i figured let's go for it it was a really easy in um and like i said right when you first come in it does there are signs about permits and everything like that but i am glad that i knew to stop at the permit office before i actually got out there the road was pretty rough when i first got there but it wasn't like terrible it you could go the speed limit it wasn't bad I got there on a thursday and i was pretty surprised actually about how busy it was compared to like the reviews that i read it was about half full when i got there it was in an ohv area so there were a lot of like toy haulers and oh um v like trailers and things like that and then there was a schoolie and a few little just like bumper pulls and then there was like two other cars when i got there so I wasn't going to be the only car camper, which wouldn't have mattered because I got a par like a permit anyways, but um, I do take note of that. <laughs> I did notice that there were pit toilets there. If you've never experienced a pit toilet before in your life, they can be super hit or miss. These were miss. Um, they looked like they had not been maintained for a while. I obviously didn't film in there. It would probably get this video taken down to be showing um how disgusting they were i was really kind of like i was kind of 
surprised how bad the pit toilets were because there was no trash in the area at all. Um, it looked really well maintained. Like the people who OHV there um, seemed to really respect the area, but the toilets were not maintained at all. And trust me, I have used some like pretty sketchy pit toilets in the past, um, but that one was not it wasn't going to work for me. So I did use some of my other methods that I have in my bathroom video. And luckily I was close to town. So I could just run my trash into town really quick. Um, if I needed to poop in a bag or <laughs> something like that. Or a lot of the times I went to town anyways to go just like hang out and to work and to like look around the town. So a lot of the times when I drove into town, I just went and used the gas station bathroom and it wasn't that big of a deal for me. Um, I'm really used to doing those kinds of things especially when I know I'm going to stay in an area a lot of the times I don't like hang out at a campsite 24 7 that whole time I usually like to pop around the area just kind of see what's going on and a lot of those times that's how I kind of coincide my bathroom trips as well the sites were pretty close together which I think for a campground, they weren't like on top of each other. You definitely had your own space. You had a little table, you had a little charcoal grill, you had a fire pit. So if you wanted to have a fire, you could. I think you needed a second permit for wood for your fire. I'm 90% sure. I could have totally been wrong, but I didn't have a fire when I was there um, because it was super, super windy. And even though there were no fire restrictions, um, it was really dry and it was really windy. And I personally didn't feel comfortable making a fire, even though some of my neighbors did. It was totally fine um, because it was in a metal ring um, and they weren't breaking any rules. There were quiet hours as well, um, so being so close together, especially people with generators, wasn't an issue because everyone had their generators off by 10. Everyone kept their dogs on a leash. I didn't have a problem at all. Um, I usually get super like weird about that kind of stuff and everybody followed the rules and behaved. I saw the cops probably out of the two weeks I was there, I probably saw them twice a week, like four or five times. I saw a Bureau of Land Management person almost every single day driving through to check permits. So as of the filming of this video, May 2022, um, I was there at the end of April they are checking permits so i would go ahead and get one it was so easy it's free um there's no reason really you shouldn't have one and it did seem to fill up at night when car campers would kind of come through spend the night and then leave really early in the morning so um there were people that like drove in but there was not a lot of like ohv use throughout the night it wasn't a loud campsite so i stayed the whole two weeks my cell phone service was good um i was kind of sad that my permit ran out and that they were checking um because i would have wanted to stay longer but obviously like that area now needs to go to the next person and that's totally fine but it's definitely going to stay on my list and I hope this video kind of helps show my thought process on all of this and i do want to do a like a second version of this video when it's not in a established kind of like campground setting because it almost looks like I stayed in a campground which was weird for me but nice for me because then I could cook outside and Pip and I sat outside and I hung up my hammock on the little railings and we just on the nice days stayed there there was a dust storm while I was there too which was kind of a little wild but that's okay and yeah, I don't know what else to say about it, but I will do a follow-up video of, like, how I choose a boondocking spot when I'm, not, like, in the forest like this. I'll do one in the future of, like, a new place that I'm going, and I have an idea of which spot it might be because it's, like, kind of a tourist attraction. So I'm really excited about that part. Um, but I do hope this helped a little bit, and it helped um, for people to kind of see how not intimidating it can be um because i was like three or four miles away from like a target i did not have to go without at all i had like chipotle two or three times while i was there and got to go out to dinner i mean it wasn't anything that's why i think sometimes people think car living and everything is so intimidating and free camping you're removed from society at all times and you can live like that if you really really want to but if you want to be involved in the area that you're in and get to explore certain areas like 
you totally can live on the other side of it. I hadn't been in a Target in so long. It was fun to be able to go to Target. It was nice to be able to just pop out of the campground and just go get some Chipotle if I was craving it and to go to shower and like do all of that regularly. Um, and then it's really nice now after I was like in society for a while to be back kind of in the woods and just to be kind of hanging out. I hope this helped and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.